Speaking of dangerous, Essendon has had an unbelievably disruptive week. Plenty to unpack here, Caroline. You've been uh, right at the front and centre of this as always. Uh, firstly, I want to talk about David Barham, who had his second attempt at fronting the media yesterday, the new Essendon uh, president. And he had this to say about the football department and then also the, st the t style of coach that they'd like. We think we're after a more experienced coach. We think a more experienced coach might be able to get more out of this list and we, we want to give our list the best chance. Someone like Josh Marnie, if you're referring to Josh, or uh, he's critical. He's absolutely critical to our success going forward. We have to get going now and get into a coaching succession process. So I don't see any changes. Were you surprised by those comments, Matthew, given that we spoke on Wednesday night about Josh Marnie's future and the fact that he might have been under a lot of pressure after that internal review? It's a tricky situation for Dave to be in because they haven't done the external review yet. So I think once you have an external review, that could all change. So I think you've got to have everyone. Like, everyone's got to be interviewed, players, staff... I think the board needs to be looked at themselves. So once, you know, for example, we've seen it with Carl, some people held their jobs, some people didn't, based on the review. So, so why yeah. would you commit to saying you need an experienced coach when it's a small pool and you may not be able to necessarily get one or they may not necessarily be able to... And then the, the second part to that is the um, commitment to Marnie and others there where the review hasn't happened. All, all you could do is say, I, I support them at that time, but once the review... Uh, came out, we couldn't support them anymore. So that, that's what you can see happening within a footy club. But I'm 100% with you on the coaching comment. That was strange from, from my perspective because Craig McRae's experience, 20 years in the game, Longmuir, Adam Kingsley, to me, I hope those guys are all factored into it because they're experienced in my eyes. And he can spin that comment that yeah. way, though. Yeah. Dave, just before yeah. we, we go on about the, the new president, the, Damien Barrett reported that the comments that Kevin Sheedy made on 5AA were the moment when Alistair Clarkson decided that he was... Uh, ruling out Essendon. Uh, uh, David Byron was asked about Kevin Sheedy, among other things, yesterday. Sheeds has been on the board for seven months. Sheeds is learning about being on boards. Let me tell you, it is boards are not easy. And the first few years you're on a board, you are learning. So I would suggest Sheeds is doing some learning, but he's incredibly valuable to our board. He brings he brings someone that's someone with four premierships under his belt. Xavier, Xavier loves the club as much as I do. Xavier, we're all trying to do the same thing. Xavier loves it as much as anyone I've seen. So we've got a lot of work to do in the next few weeks and months to get this club resorted. Not staying on the CEO. Yeah, I feel supportive. Yeah, it's been a difficult week. Um, that's that's easy to tell. Um, but I feel you know, we're all got the best interest of the Essendon Football Club. That's that's where there is absolute alignment. So David Barham was at the club today talking to staff and that he needed to be at the club today, really, to start the healing process because it was appalling the way it was handled last week, just dreadful, particularly the treatment of Ben Rutten, the way they dragged it on for a week. And, you know, I've, I've never seen a Essendon so criticised openly by other clubs and coaches in the AFL since the drug scandal. Xavier Campbell, we know, is a two-year deal. Dorothy Hisgrove, the former AFL executive, once seen in a Collingwood scarf, but now very much an Essendon board member, is going to be helping oversee this external review. I think Ernst and Young will be sending in one of their people, or they will, one of them will be seconded by the club to do this review. But uh, I think the Alistair Clarkson issue, Craig, is that... Um, I think even Alistair Clarkson wondered whether he could handle the factions and the different... I don't think anyone really knows, including Alistair Clarkson, who's running Essendon at the moment. I think there was a fear that Alistair might become too mired in the weeds of that yep. problem to be worrying about coaching. And I think that's one of the reasons he chose North Melbourne, who themselves have issues. So I'm in Matthew's camp that I admire that David's put his head up. I'm sure he would have Absolutely. preferred if others to do it. Yep. it took courage to do it Timing and he presented was bad. Timing was poor. The execution was, was average and I was surprised there wasn't a plan already. Like normally in those situations if you agitate you have a clear plan of what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Uh, running a process seems to likely to rule out the Hinkleys of the world so I'm not sure why they've snookered themselves on that particular well, bit. I think, I think Ross Lyon will very very much be a candidate. Yep. I don't know if Ross wants it, but I know that Essendon will look at him. They would love to look at Hinkley, but you're right. So, how can he put himself in a process now? And there has to be a process. Can they run them uh, yeah, hand in hand, in a sense? So do you need to do an external review while they're still... They, the, the view is they have to, they have to because yeah. they don't have time to wait. And how can you have three footy figures, Sheedy, Wellman and Madden, which is way more than any other club have, 
and be this messy and undignified. I don't, I don't think Kevin Sheedy has been a good board yep. member. And here's an example of greats. I mean, absolute greats of football clubs who've joined the boards where it hasn't been a great success. Mark Rusciuto might argue the toss, but he's never really made a sensational appointment. Don Pike wasn't a bad appointment. Neither was Phil Walsh. They work, didn't work out for other reasons, but it's not looking good now. And we look down at all the others. Finals are heavy. Well, there's been some great contribution from greats, but they haven't been... Uh, Chris, Chris Judd would yeah. admit he made some terrible appointments yep. when he was on the Carlton board. I think that Kevin Sheedy is not a good board member. And, you know, David Barham, it's, it's significant he says that because, of course, he crossed the floor to support David Barham the week before last, and he has to say that. I think David, um, Kevin has been bad for Ben Rutten. They have no real relationship. Kevin turned on him in the end. Kevin doesn't like the football boss, Josh Marnie. I don't see how he can continue if Marnie stays for a start. And the alignment with Sheedy and Dodoro, who are, seem to be campaigning for James Hurd, it... Too much looking in the past for mine, Matthew. Well, Joe Watson said as much. Uh, Tim Watson had his view as well. As, and then James Heard and the suggestion of him is all ahead in this particular piece. The club is shambolic. And frankly, Essendon fans should be appalled at how this has played out. But David Barron took control of the club to deliver an external review. They get the chance now to make transformational changes, which will include a new coach. And I can't see club CEO Xavier Campbell continuing on in his role either. Well, it's been diabolical, really, for the football club. I think that at least they're consistent. Because they consistently don't know what they're doing and they consistently get it wrong. Well, I don't see how that, that would work. I mean, I'm not sure what James's mentality is, whether he wants to come back into the football club. You can't keep looking back. They need to formulate a plan, stick to it, get the right people in the right roles and back them in. So I think the Watsons have been, up until now, strong supporters of Xavier Campbell. And I don't think Tim was necessarily dissing da Xavier Campbell. I just think he makes the point that Xavier was really ignored in the, in the Ben Rutten situation. Xavier is now holding on. And as I said, Matthew, he's got a two-year deal. It, it's, a, it's very messy still. It is messy. And unfortunately, that uh, until the board sorts themselves out, it's hard for any coach. Or and it filters down to the playing group. The playing group were very disappointing, so they shouldn't get off scot free on anything. But uh, you can't function you, unless you, the board. Can says. I, quick one on the playing group: Do you think they were disingenuous to go in so hard for Rutten when the perception behind the scenes is that they haven't had his back? Yes, Hutch, I, I agree. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. I, I think that they should. I think the week was more about how poorly Ben was handled. And not about how the team performed and how Ben coached. But he interpreted that as support for him. Yeah, and I think people... F you, know, you don't think that was the case? I think people felt sorry for him and looked past the performance of the Essendon yeah. players, which needs to be looked at. I, I, th I think he had some players and he didn't have others. Yeah. And the loudest voices were the ones he didn't have. And then but, I, but I think he started, you know, he started to lose the players with that Bell Chambers decision yeah. in the first week oh, of his sure. unofficial yeah. coaching. And I don't know, I, he was up against it from the start with the factions. And then there's James Hurd and what this means and will he be considered, will he go through the process? Uh, your uh, comments last week about his role or otherwise potentially in this and Mark Robinson and... Uh, Robbo had this to say on 3AW on the weekend. Her hatred of Heard is well known. Her hatred of me is coming to the surface. How do you feel about her? No, I don't like her at all. Caroline Wilson's irrelevant in my life. Now, she continues to take pot shots at me and people send them to me because I don't watch Footy Classified. I used to watch it all the time. So she takes pot shots. I'm just writing facts. The story tonight on James Heard being a contender for the Essendon job is not something I made up. That is a fact. If we're going to start talking facts, Caroline, as Heather said, said 24 hours ago, Alistair Clarkson's going to Essendon. OK, so she's making it personal. I can get really personal. So that was on the weekend, and then tonight he had another half a go, I would, I would call it, on uh, AFL 360. How do you feel about what he said there? Listen, two senior journos having a go at each other is not something I have ever engaged but did, in. Did that hurt I don't, I don't hate Mark Robinson. I don't hate James Hurd. I hate what he did when he was coach or, you know, the regime he helped oversee. I absolutely believe James Hurd is a contender for the job and I believe Mark is supporting him and I think he has for some time. He also spoke strongly in support of him coaching GWS. That is not a criticism of a senior journalist. It is pointing out that another senior journal... I don't agree that James... I, and I know he won't get the job. It's just... It's unthinkable he would get the job. But I'm not criticising anyone by saying that. It's just dealing in facts. And, yeah, to get 
It's happened to me before. I sort of get used to it, but haven't heard something as venomous as that for a while. I didn't like it to put my name to it. I thought it was uh, rude and undignified and unbecoming of the position. And I like Robbo, but that's he that's he's misread the room entirely on his interpretation of what you said for one, but even more important than that, to use that language. He's absolutely right. My gut feeling was that Alistair would choose Essendon, but as I said, based on absolutely no prior knowledge, just based on my gut feeling. Do you work with Mark Robinson? You're both at 3AW. Oh, we don't. Look, listen, my teammates were working with him that night. Matthew was one of them. Tim asked a question I don't think he needed to ask, and Tim's acknowledged that, and I respect his view now. I I, I move on, seriously. I I honestly do, do not think people care about me and Mark Robinson and if they do, do they're caring about the it wrong is, issue. It is hard to listen to, Lordo. Did yeah. you feel that in the moment? Yeah, yeah. obviously I've, I've wrestled with it that I didn't do or say anything at the time and I'm sure Tim Lane probably feels the same. I shouldn't speak for Tim but that's how I felt. Yeah, it's one thing you shouldn't get is personal and uh, that's what, what it certainly got. The, the Ken Hinkley situation... I don't hate anyone, mm. by the way. No, I don't, think, I don't think anyone hates anyone in footy. We're all in the same industry and it wasn't a great use of language from Robbo, that's for sure. Uh, David Kosh was interesting. Uh, Ken Hickley's role in this is, is um, an interesting one because he may be a target of Essendon. If he was, he would get a long-term contract. If he did, it'd be hard to say no to. But all those things don't seem to deter the Port Adelaide president, David Kosh. And the word overnight, Koshy, is they will certainly sound out your man, Ken Hinckley, as oh. well, who has a year to run on his contract at Port Adelaide. Can Tom, I ask you a question? Uh, tell them they're dreaming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and why would Ken go, go to a club like that? Well, they might offer him turmoil. a four or five years contract. They'll, they'll sort themselves out. Yeah, no, nah, tell them they're dreaming. Yeah, interesting reaction from Koshy, but it, I take Ken at his word. He's been asked repeatedly, would he consider North? He said no. Would he consider Essendon? I, don't, I think the answer will still be no. And why would he go from Port Adelaide, which is pretty stable despite... Five years versus one. Yeah, despite underwhelming results. But it, it would be a massive call for him to leave. He's doing ex- exit interviews today. He's planning for next year. It would be a massive call for him to leave, and I don't think he will. I look forward to talking to Ross Lyon on Wednesday night.